we turn to the author of the Gartman letter out at 3 a.m. every morning, Dennis Gartman. Dennis, good noon to you. <laughs> good noon to you too, Tom. Good. Uh, Welcome to a, welcome to television. Well, yeah, we've done it before, but not like this. We're trying to, to keep it interesting, and your notes are very interesting. I would focus, Dennis, uh, just, just to begin the discussion on gold. You've been long and right on gold for some yeah. time. Can you reaffirm that right now? Should we still be in gold? Well, I think you should still be in gold. The funds that I run, I am still long of gold. I am less long than I was. That's about the only thing that I can say. There's a great deal of euphoria regarding gold. I've never had this many requests for interviews from around the world, from various media sources, newspapers, radio, television. An un uncommonly large number of requests for, for my view on the gold market. The last time I saw this was in December of last year when gold got to 12.20 an ounce, and a week and a half, two weeks later, it was trading 10.40. When you have this kind of euphoria, this kind of, uh, of excitement, right. you usually get corrections. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if we fall $100 from here. Am I bearish of gold? No, I'm still bullish. I just think too many people okay. have gotten involved. Folks, this is a hallmark of the show. This is what we do. We go deeper than just, Dennis, is gold going to go up, going down? What's unique about Dennis Gartman is he buys gold in euros. Here's the chart. Let's look at the chart. Gold in euros, not dollars. And Dennis Gartman gets hate mail about this confusion about this. We're now going to explain this. Dennis Gartman, why are you giving me grief about this? Why do I want to own gold in euros? The reason I want to own gold in euros, and I own gold in euro terms, I own gold in sterling terms, is because if it's a bull market in gold, it should be a bull market in all currencies. Too many people want to say that gold is going up because the dollar's weak. That may be true. But gold is going up in terms of euros, gold is going up in terms of sterling, and it shows you that it's all other currencies against which gold is rising. Two, by owning gold and getting and, and hedging out my dollar risk that is attendant to owning just gold, it's less volatile on a normal daily basis. And I'm always looking for ways to make trades less volatile in nature. So I've owned gold in euro terms. I've owned gold and still do in sterling terms. And I see no reason to change that opinion, Tom. Dennis Gartman, you reaffirm today your long Swiss short euro call. A little confusing to some of our viewers, I'm sure. Uh, the dollar's not involved here. It's Hilton Brand. He's the head of the Swiss National Bank. We featured him earlier as FT op-ed. Strong Swiss Frank, why do you reaffirm strong Swiss Frank? Well, it, honestly, it's because the Swiss National Bank has been so wrong. They have been intervening all year. As you watch that, that uh, cross, as you see that trend going from the upper left to the lower right, the Swiss National Bank has been trying to stem the Swiss franc from getting stronger. They have been unable to do it. We keep making new lows for the euro against the Swiss franc. And this little rally that you've had in the past several days at the very bottom right of the chart, where the euro has strengthened against Swissy, I'm selling that cross. I'm buying the, uh, the Swiss franc. I am selling the euro. For the last half hour, I've been wrong. Been, well, yeah, that's honest. I mean, I, I like to hear that. For the last half hour, uh, you, you've lightened up. What's great about Dennis Gartman, folks, and we're going to talk about Meredith Whitney here in our next section, uh, in, in the battle here, Gartman publishes his investment calls in his daily newsletter. What's your worst call this year, Dennis? What's kept you, what's kept you, what's kept you off the golf course the most this year? <laughs> I, I guess the worst call was buying grain a couple of weeks ago and then getting absolutely blindsided by the, by the USDA suddenly finding 300 million oh. bushels of corn that they thought they had lost. I'm absolutely shocked. Dennis Gartman blaming the Obama administration for his, his, biggest, <laughs> his biggest loss. So what did the USDA do? What did they do on wheat? Or they did it on corn, excuse me. What did they do? They did it on corn. They, they thought they had... Uh, beginning uh, back in June, they had lost 300 million bushels of corn. Suddenly, last week, they found those 300 million bushels of corn again. That's a lot of corn, and especially in a, in a country where we're going to produce about 13 billion bushels. You found 300 million, and suddenly all the grain markets went limit down last week. That was probably my worst trade. It was a, it was a debacle. That and having any positions on during in, in early May with the flash crash, uh, that one that one really hurt. The flash crash was amazing. I think every hedge fund manager in the world got hurt. We did too. Yeah, 
And, and now, folks, Dennis Gartman on the Fighting Wolf Pack of North Carolina State. <laughs> Dennis, I brought up here a chart. This is North Carolina employment. And what you see here, what you don't see, folks, off the left side of the chart is a just wonderful glide path of improvement, of job creation over many decades in North Carolina. Oops, 2001, then a little bit more growth. And I'll tell you, Dennis, it's a, it's a lot of angst in North Carolina. Is it, around, is, is it around the rest of the 50 states? What are we going to do to get North Carolina back on trend? Well, I think if the Wolfpack continues to win, that will be a great help. But what's going to have to be done for around the states to, to, uh, to get unemployment down, to get employment back up, is we're going to have to free the economy up. I, I think raising taxes at this time is illogical and wrong. I think we're going to have to talk to the bank examiners of the country who are making it very difficult for the banks to put money out for lending. The bank examiners, to whom I have taught derivatives for years, uh, have been putting pressure on banks to cut their lending to, to curtail the advancement of, of the economy. Mm. We need to make those guys sit down, be quiet, and let banks go out and do the lending that they need to do if there are, in fact, borrowers out there who want to borrow. But raising taxes to try to balance the budget is not going to, uh, to be successful. And until that happens, the unemployment rate is going to stay stagnant a real, very near 10 percent and likely not get back under eight and a half for many years. Uh, Dennis, 15 seconds here. How often should a sell side analyst be right? Are they right 20 percent of the time, 30 percent of the time, 40 percent of the time? What's your guess? For somebody who puts money to work uh, on a consistent basis and, and, and runs money, I'll be honest, if I'm right 35 to 40 percent of the time, yeah. I'm going to be very happy. I'm going to be Gar very happy. That's you perfect. Uh, let's leave it right there, Dennis.